so you can see how the this tooth is pushing out this is the old tooth and then this is the new tooth coming in and it pushes it forward this is the story of Cynthia Moss, an elephant scientist who has called this place home for close to half a century. She has been living among the elephants. And then it breaks off and breaks off. I think it's sometimes it's uncomfortable. And so that's how they grow. They don't grow from underneath, they grow from the back. Oh, okay. I think so you it, it, it gives you the edge. Yeah, now so this one, this one's on its last scene now. This is a very old female. I can tell it's a female because it's a small jaw. And that's her last tooth. That's her sixth tooth, and it's worn down. And that's maybe why she died, because it's, it's her final tooth. Okay. But this one, this one's young still. This is a male. Um, and then, yeah, you can see where the, where the tooth's going to come in in the back here. That's the tooth coming forward. She lives in a compound that she and her employees built from scratch. They help her run the place. <laughs> oh, okay. Those are the those are the uh, leg bones, and that's the and that's the pelvis. The pelvis. You can probably tell about you know how big the elephant, whether it was a big male or female. You could tell, uh, but not. And then if you if you can get some DNA out of the. You might get some DNA out of the bone, and then you can do an analysis of that. But the other bones, this, the, the jaws will tell you more, more than the bones. Her journey will soon change the way the rest of the world thought about elephants. Her aim was to uncover the complex elephant society. Such a study had never been attempted before. That's a new vehicle. Ah, how old is that one? That's only about six years old or so. That's six years old. Which, do you have an old vehicle? Yeah, it's over here. Okay. I'm not sure I can even get this started, actually. But this C K X C that means it was, it was, this is a 1985. This car, 1985. So it's 36 years old. When you were starting your research, this is where. No, I had another land. I started in '72. This, okay. my a tree fell down and hit my first Land Rover. Oh, okay. And then I had to oh, get. Then you had to get this one. Yeah. Does it still work? Well, I can see if I can get it started, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, I started it the other day. <laughs> I'm not sure it will start now. <laughs> it's very, very old. Very, very old car. Okay, let's see, we have to glow it. You know, you have to glow. It's a seat diesel, so it has to glow. Oh, it has to glow fast. Yeah. Okay, let's see if I can get it to go. Hi, my name is Cynthia Moss, and I'm the director of the Ambicelli Trust for Elephants. And the, and the trust runs the longest running elephant project in the world, and that's called the Ambicelli Elephant Research Project. We started here in 1972. So it's 49 years old. Next year will be 50, and we have to have a big party. <laughs> so 
Oh, well, I, I came as a tourist originally. <laughs> now I love that we all love this old car. It's like a pet. It's like a, our pet. Oh. We we never we never want to give it up. Oh, always, yeah. Uh -huh. It's been in many films. This car. This car. Yeah, because we we did a whole series of films. Wow. And um, this was the car that was in the film you know, as, as we went around as I went around looking for elephants. So it's. It's very well known to people who have seen those films. <laughs> oh, nice. I, can, I, I actually had a, a long trip here. It was two months in East Africa, Uganda, Tanzania, and Kenya. And um, I really fell in love with Africa, East Africa. And then um, I, I, I volunteered on an elephant project in Tanzania at Lake Manyara National Park for three weeks. And then I got completely hooked on elephants. That, that's how it all started. Oh, don't they make funny noises? Like and where I volunteered, I was offered a job. I was offered a job to come back and be a research assistant. Nothing you can do. Um, that was in 1967. <laughs> it's long. We're talking a long time ago. <laughs> and I came back in January 1968, and I've been here ever since. There. <laughs> First ten, a year, about a year in Tanzania, and the rest of the time in Kenya. Using a photo book of pictures of the elephants in Amboseli, Cynthia uncovered ways of identifying individuals. Actually, the Amboseli population is small by, you know, it, for instance, in Botswana, they have 130,000 elephants in Botswana. Kenya has maybe 36,000. We did have a lot more at one point, but then poaching knocked them out. And um, so the Amboseli populations is, is actually one of the reasons I chose them to study, because they not, it's not a big population. When I started, there were about 700 elephants here. And, and the, the point was I wanted to do, to study a population that I could get to know individually every elephant. And I think once you get above, you know, 2,000 or more, it gets very hard to, to learn all of them and remember all of them. So this, so I, so at the time when I started in Savo, for instance, there were 42,000 elephants in 1972. There's, and I, so there's no way you could get to know every ele elephant there. So I, even though it was known for its elephants, I didn't choose them. I came to Amboseli where, where I knew that there was a small population and, um, and they were already uh, relatively used to vehicles being around them. So it wasn't, they didn't need to be, ta you know, you know gotten used to, the, to cars and, and uh, people watching them. So it was, it was good. The elephants also got to know her and her fellow researchers. Cynthia says, at first, all elephants may look same. Large, gray, big ears, thin skin, and of course, with tusks. But she says, these gentle creatures are different from each other and have distinctive features. She identifies individuals by the familiar features. It's just always interesting to watch the fa how the the family dynamics. You know, they live in uh, they live in families. Elephants, and each family is led by the oldest female. 
She's called the matriarch. We call her the matriarch. And the dynamics within the family is fascinating. You know, this, how she, she acts with her sisters or her cousins or her nieces. And um, it's, it's always interesting. We're never bored. Never, never bored when we're out with elephants. Because when you know them all, it's like a wonderful soap opera, you know, you're, you're, you're following, oh, you know, what's so-and-so going to do today, you know, and, oh, look, you know, she's, she's being mated by, so, by uh, one of the elephants, you know, and, 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 oh, and then that one has, an, has had a new baby, but every single elephant's known individually. So you go out and you say, okay, there's, there's the uh, PC family, so there's Placida, there's, there's Petula, there's Pleiades, there's Pink, there's, you know, you, you know them all. And you've known them since, most of them since they were born. So of the families, we, we know all, everybody, all of them. They're all known. They all have their photos. We have a photo ID system where we, because the ears of an elephant are very distinctive. They have nicks and holes or, or vein patterns that you can see. So each one is, has, has, a, pick, has a, a sheet of, pay, of sheet that we carry and it has a left ear and a right ear in the picture. And then we, so they're all known, every one of them. Well, in, in Amboseli we have um, 63 families and then we have about uh, 400, uh, 500 independent males because the males leave the family when they're about 12, 13, 14 years old and then they become independent and the family remains with the, with the females and then the small calves. A good example was the late team named by researchers for being a member of the T family. The giant elephant was famed for having long tusks that reached the ground. He died in 2020 due to natural causes. He left behind his cousin Townsend and brother Craig. This was the car that was in the film you know, as, as we went around, as I went around looking for elephants. So it's, it's very well known to people who have seen those films. Sometimes alone in Hakka, Cynthia Moores followed families and even large herds of elephants. She studied their behavior, how they pass information, sense danger, and even call for help. Well, the older, the older animals in the family are very experienced. They've, they've experienced things over their lifetime and they know what's dangerous. And then they, and they're teaching, always teaching the young ones. So they have a very good sense of smell, extremely good, better than a dog. They're really, really good sense of smell. Sometimes elephants are vocal, sometimes they communicate in silence, like this family here. When we arrived here, it was moving towards a pool of water. Then it froze, as if commanded to do so. Then suddenly, two other elephants appeared from the opposite direction. They were certainly following a known path. And within no time, they joined the family. Little greetings here and there. And suddenly, taking off together with no apparent cue. They have pretty good hearing. They, they don't have great eyesight, but they can see. So they're, they're picking up um, sounds and they're picking up sense and then they they know and as 
And as I said, they've learned from their mothers and their grandmothers what's dangerous, what, sm what smell is bad, and what, what, why they should run away or whatever. Yeah, they can also feel with their feet vibrations in the, in, you know, and, and sounds in, that carry through the, through the ground. Cynthia Moss has witnessed the loss of many elephants. The 1980s were bad times for elephants. Amboseli has always been a safe haven for them. But throughout the rest of Africa, elephants were being killed for their ivory. Poachers were killing elephants to meet the demand for their ivory. Males were targeted for their heavier tasks and poachers hacked ivory from their faces with machetes. The remaining white skulls were a reminder of how the world had become cruel to the gentle giants. The social structure of the elephants was on the brink of collapse. Breeding males were being hacked left, right and center. The killing posed danger to the Kenyan elephants. The warning of extinction was sounded and the anti-poaching campaign was put into gear. Despite several hurdles, there was some degree of success and elephant numbers have been stabilizing. Amboseli National Park, for example, just realized a baby boom. But Cynthia Moss tells me elephants are facing an even deadlier enemy. Well, the main major threat for elephants today in Kenya is not poaching. Kenya has really done a very good job of stopping the poaching for ivory, you know, for the tusks. But the major threat for elephants is habitat loss. And that is that all these areas that elephants have used are being trans, um, transferred to other kinds of, ag to agriculture, to quarries, to, you know, to avocado farms <laughs> and such and such. So that's really uh, the, the major thing. If, if, we lose, if we lose those areas, the, just the corridors and dispersal areas, we'll lose the populations of elephants. This is the Kenyan historian.